This is part two of the video on fuel utilization during exercise based off of chapter four of the Powers Exercise Physiology textbook. In the previous video, or part one of this video, we talked about the respiratory exchange ratio. We discussed the effect of exercise intensity on fat utilization and discussed a concept called the crossover point and also described the maximum point of fat oxidation or fat max. Now we'll briefly discuss the effect of exercise duration on fuel utilization and then wrap it up by talking about the role of lactate in energy production. This is a, a very nice graph that comes in the Powers textbook and it illustrates everything that we need to talk about with the effect of exercise duration on fuel selection. When you start off an exercise, this, this is assuming doing an exercise about 65% of VO2 max. When you start off at exercise, predominantly muscle glycogen will be your source of energy. Now you're going to be burning most a lot, doing a lot of aerobic glycolysis from muscle glycogen and blood glucose will make a, a significant contribution as well. You also get a, a decent contribution from plasma fatty acids and muscle triglycerides. As exercise time goes on or the duration of the exercise goes on, if you go uh, one hour, which is kind of a long time, you start to use less muscle glycogen that starts to become depleted and blood glucose makes more of a contribution and plasma fatty acids become more important. Meanwhile, muscle triglycerides uh, decrease in importance. If you were crazy enough to go exercise for about four hours, I have no idea what you would want to do that for, for four hours. I like exercise, but not four hours worth. Uh, if you did four hours of exercise, the chances are you will burn through your muscle glycogen and you'll be relying a lot on blood glucose and chances are you'll probably want to be supplementing uh, blood glucose by bringing in carbohydrates from sports drinks. Uh, so muscle glycogen will be pretty much depleted by four hours. You will start using a lot of plasma fat, free fatty acids as well uh, that will fuel the exercise and muscle triglycerides won't be as important. So really the main point from this is at the beginning of an exercise, like an exercise of one hour or so, muscle glycogen and blood glucose contribute a lot. As the duration goes on, you start to wear through that muscle glycogen and plasma fatty acids become relatively more important. So you burn more fat as the duration of the exercise goes on. Okay, now let's talk about lactate and how it can be utilized during exercise. So lactate, I feel, always gets a really bad rap. Uh, people always describe it as a waste product, or some people even blame it for being the cause of muscle soreness. Uh, it's, it's completely wrong. Lactate is a very important molecule and actually a major source of energy for us as we exercise. And unfortunately, it seems like only exercise physiologists have, have recognized this. There's, despite there being 30-something years of evidence of lactate being a major source of energy and not just a waste product, uh, people still describe lactate as just being waste. So hopefully you guys will do better. So where's the lactate coming from? If you remember when we go through glycolysis, uh, the NADH is, they need to give up the hydrogens uh, in order to be restored to an NAD and help glycolysis proceed as normal. If they can't give those up to the mitochondria, in aerobic metabolism, then the NADH donates the eight the hydrogens to pyruvate, and with the help of lactate dehydrogenase, an enzyme, pyruvate is then turned into lactate. And that gets the H's off of the NAD, and then glycolysis can proceed. So lactate is, is a byproduct of, of metabolism, and of glycolysis, and it's, it's pretty important. One of the things that has that shows us that lactate is not just a waste product is something called the Cori cycle. Now, when the lactate is produced in your muscle, it can either uh, go into the mitochondria of the same muscle or the mitochondria of muscle next door, or it can leak out into the circulation. 
and once in the circulation that lactate often makes its way to the liver and in the liver it can be converted into glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis. In the liver that glucose can be stored in the form of glycogen or can make its way back into the circulation uh, as glucose. And in fact there's some relatively recent evidence indicating that uh, blood glucose derived from lactate and gluconeogenesis is a major source of, of blood glucose uh, during exercise. <laughs> to say that more clearly, the evidence indicates that lactate going to the liver and being converted into glucose is a very important source of maintaining blood glucose during exercise. And that's called the Cori cycle. And this is one of the things that you may or may not see in like a biochemistry textbook. People have seemed to, have seemed to catch on to this one. But for some reason, they haven't caught on to the major fate of lactate. Uh, the vast majority of lactate isn't going to the, to the liver. It's actually being oxidized or broken down in ATP resynthesis, either in the skeletal muscle itself or in places like the heart. The slow twitch fibers and the heart are really supercharged to, to break down lactate. They have a couple of enzymes that help facilitate the movement of lactate into the mitochondria. And as illustrated in this, this figure over here, uh, if you have a, a skeletal muscle, these fast twitch fibers are predominantly where the lactate is coming from. And that lactate can either leak out of the, of the muscle and enter into the circulation and make its way to the heart. And, and in the heart, it, the heart just gobbles that up and, and uses that as a fuel source, or that lactate from the slow twitch fi fast twitch fiber can move into an active skeletal muscle right next door, a slow twitch fiber next door that has mitochondria that can then consume it. In fact, uh, multiple tracer studies where they put in lactate that has uh, a tracer on it have indicated that this is actually the fate for most of lactate. Uh, the vast majority of it actually gets oxidized in skeletal muscle or in the heart, where about 20, less than 20% of it goes to the liver and is maintained in the process of gluconeogenesis. So lactate is a, is a major source of energy during exercise. So next time somebody tells you that it's just a waste product or tries to blame all the problems of the world on lactate, you tell them it's not that bad and it's actually a very important source of energy during exercise. So that wraps up the lecture today. Uh, we've talked about the respiratory exchange ratio, how it's the ratio of VCO2 to VO2, and tells us a lot about fat and carbohydrate utilization. We've talked about the major sources of uh, fuel during exercise and the effect of exercise intensity on fuel utilization, the crossover point, fat max. We've talked about the effect of exercise duration on fuel selection, how that's become increasingly more important as the exercise duration goes on. And we've talked about how lactate can be utilized as an energy source during exercise. That'll wrap it up for today. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, if you're interested, these are the references cited in the paper, and I will see you guys later.